My name is Dr. Brian Stacy. I'm a veterinarian and I work with our national sea turtle program and specifically with things that are related to sea turtle health, welfare, and mortality. All species of sea turtles are threatened or endangered under the U.S. Endangered Species Act. So one of my roles within NOAA is to investigate causes of sea turtle stranding, so things that cause sick or injured sea turtles to wash ashore on our beaches. Today I have a green turtle which is here for post-mortem examination, which we term uh, necropsy. Basically, the point of the examination is to evaluate the animal and determine why it died. And this is important because it helps us identify threats to wild populations. So this animal has four injuries across the shell or carapace. There's one, two, three, four. This is typical of what we see with wounds caused by boat propellers. Every time it turns and makes a strike, we see these evenly spaced wounds across the shell. But we also have this structure here, which is a skeg, which protects the prop. And one of the common sets of injuries that we see in sea turtles is a combination of both propeller and skeg wounds. Here's an example in a loggerhead, which has a series of parallel, evenly spaced wounds that are caused by the boat propeller. And then we have an intersect wound that's caused by the skeg. So the first part of the internal examination is I'm going to remove the bottom part of the shell. And as I was afraid, I can see that the propeller wounds have penetrated the lung quite extensively in multiple places. So when the lung is breached like that, it wouldn't hold air anymore. Another thing that can happen is seawater can enter the lung and cause the animal ultimately to drown. I also see multiple perforations of the digestive tract. So had the turtle not suffered the more immediately fatal wounds to the lung, that would have caused severe secondary bacterial infection. Also part of what I'm doing here is evaluating the general health of this turtle. The GI tract is full of food. This is a turtle that was actively feeding. It's robustly muscled. It's got abundant body fat. Everything I'm seeing here indicates a healthy turtle that died suddenly from the vessel strike. About a third of all the green turtles, loggerheads, and leatherbacks that we find as strandings have evidence of being struck by vessels. So this is a, a major problem that we would like the public's help with. There are a few ways you can help reduce this problem. One is to recognize that you're sharing the waters with sea turtles. So when you're out boating, do things like wear polarized glasses, always pay close attention to where you're going. Another thing is that we see a lot of vessel strike injuries around our passes and inlets. So be hyper aware when you're going in and out of those areas and travel at a safe speed but as slowly as possible so that turtles might have a time to avoid your vessel. Uh, another thing that we see is a disproportionate number of vessel strikes in our adult turtles that are here to breed and nest. So one of the ways we can minimize strikes to adult turtles is for boats to stay a minimum of a kilometer offshore during our nesting season or to go really slowly when they're in proximity to shore. So if you're at the beach and you encounter a stranded turtle, all states have hotlines that you can call to report to make sure someone who's authorized can come and render assistance to that animal or document it.